Hello, movie fans. Thanks so much for clicking on another episode of Side Flick. My name is Chris. Feel like it's been a hot belly dancing minute since we've done a side flick. So it was definitely about time we started diving into some movie news, and we got some exciting stuff to talk about here today. Some of the things we're going to be diving into here is talking about the Super Mario movie because we have a little update that is getting a little controversial with fans. Coincidentally enough, we also have news about Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I know you guys have been dying for an update there, and we finally got one. The Power Rangers reboot taking a very unexpected turn. Spider Man. No way home because I have to. How else am I gonna get some of you punks to click on this video? That along with so much more. So many you movie fans to give me your opinions with everything we discuss here today. It is not a side flick unless you are letting your voice be heard down below. And again, just as a reminder to you guys, Warner Brothers sniped my previous Twitter account for posting some illegal Super Pets pictures. I still can't believe that's the movie that was my downfall. If you want to do me the biggest favor and refollow my new Twitter account, trying hard to rebuild that thing, it would honestly mean the world to me. And also later today, be on the lookout because I I will be bringing you a review for the new Resident Evil movie that, man, I got a lot to say about that movie. And I guess diving into the thing that was the cause of my Twitter account getting suspended, they went ahead and officially released the Super Pets trailer. This will be the animated movie dealing with Crypto the Super Dog and a bunch of other Justice League pets. Now, I'm not going to be a petty brat and bash on this trailer just because of what they did in my Twitter account. I'm going to say this honestly looks like a lot of fun. I do like John Krasinski as the voice of Superman, the little banter he's having with Crypto the Super Dog. There's even an Iron Man reference in here. That's kind of cool. Some of the comedic moments in here were even working for me. I was most surprised just to see the Justice League. They gave my boy Cyborg his afro. They kind of did my boy Batman dirty. The only gripe I have with this trailer is just as a fan because this isn't really the super pets I know. They took a very different direction and instead of actually giving us the pets of the Justice League members, these just happen to be rescue animals that get hit with the powers of the Justice League. And the one that hurt me the most was Ace the Bad Hound. This isn't really Ace the Bad Hound that I know from the cartoons and the comics. He's supposed to be like Batman where he's just a regular dog, but because he was trained by Batman, he's a very intelligent, smart mutt like Batman in dog form, and instead they gave him superpowers where he's indestructible. I guess that's just a little nitpick I'll have to deal with, but putting that aside, I'm gonna give it a treasure because it looks like a lot more fun than I was expecting, but damn, can't believe I lost everything because of this trailer. Let me know what you guys think of the Super Pets trailer. Is it a trash or treasure for you? Moving on now to the Blue Little Furry Hedgehog Sonic. I have been dying to talk some Sonic Movie 2 news because let's just say I have a costume in my closet. I can't wait to bust out when there's some big news. We have a couple little updates with Sonic 2 to get some fans excited. It seems now that the marketing is starting to begin for the second Sonic movie. One of the first things that popped up is a Russian movie website went ahead and showed off some promotional material for the Sonic movie. Now, I'd love to show it to you guys, but Paramount went ahead and started taking down every piece of that merchandise everywhere. And lately, I've just been getting sniped left and right, so I can't risk it. But I'll be completely honest with you guys, I don't even think it's anything that's really worth hiding because a lot of the promotional material seemed very similar to the promotional material used the first time around. The only thing new is there was two plushie dolls, a Sonic one and a Tails one, but they look like very average looking Sonic and Tails plushie dolls, nothing that exciting. And right now it seems like the Paramount YouTube channel is hinting heavily of when we might see that trailer finally. If you go to Paramount's latest video about Thanksgiving or honestly any video, Sonic movie fans are just spamming the comments asking when are we getting the second trailer? Trailer. When are we getting the second trailer? And whoever is responsible for the Paramount YouTube channel seems to be very enthusiastic about the whole situation and is responding to a lot of people, kind of hinting to them when we might get this trailer. And all of it points to Thanksgiving Day. Because we had a person straight up ask them, could you give us any hint to when we might see the second Sonic trailer? And all they responded with was Happy Thanksgiving. And if you look at the other replies where people are asking for the Sonic 2 trailer, it all has to do with Thanksgiving or turkeys. This also does kind of pair up nicely because there is said to be a Sonic the Hedgehog balloon at the Macy's Day Parade, which if you're not from America, that's kind of like one of the big Thanksgiving parades that sometimes airs on television. And this is the first time Sonic will be part of the parade in like 30 years years. So it looks very likely that this week we might be getting a little teaser or something for Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I'm still not going to be 100% sure on it. I still think the best thing to do is to do what Robotnik said where he said I'll be home in time for Christmas then release some sort of teaser or trailer around the Christmas time because that kind of fits in with what you were saying with your movie. But hey, 
I guess the sooner the better. All that's left to do now is wait to see if this Thursday we actually get a Sonic teaser or if this YouTube Paramount channel was just pulling our chain. What do you guys think? Moving on now to talk about some Super Mario. A little controversial thing just happened today as of me making this video where we had the rap go ahead and kind of report on what we can expect from Chris Pratt's voice as Mario. And specifically talking with Chris Milandrotti, who is the producer for Illuminations, he had this to say about the character. Milandrotti said that as an Italian-American himself he understood the concern that Pratt who is not from an Italian background would be voicing an Italian character and video game character and asked if the movie would lean heavily into Mario's accent from the original game and his catchphrase it's a me a Mario. Milandrotti explained that the film addresses that and it's not how Pratt intends to voice the character. Continuing on we cover it in the movie Milandrotti says so you'll see we definitely nod to that but that's not the tenor of the performance throughout the film. All I can tell you is the voice he's doing for us as Mario is phenomenal. Yeah, I can't wait for people to hear it. And so to kind of back up a bit, this is where a lot of the controversy is coming up online, where it even tricked me at first before I finally read the actual article, is where other websites are taking this statement made from the producer of Illumination and are saying Chris Pratt won't say it's a me, a Mario in the movie, which is like an iconic line for Mario, you would want him to say it in the film, when in reality when you read the article, what they they're actually saying is that Mario won't have the stereotypical high-pitched Italian accent throughout the film. So it's very possible that Mario will still be saying it's a me, a Mario, but he won't be saying it like he does in the video games. And it definitely seems now that Mario will not be having an Italian accent, but for some reason they do address it in the movie. I wonder how that works out where you have to address the fact that you're not speaking like an Italian. And look, I gotta be honest, I'm a little conflicted on this. I was already a little worrisome with Chris Pratt being Mario. Nothing against the man, you guys know, I like Chris Pratt as an actor, but I really was just like him as Mario, that just doesn't seem to fit. And now even going further that they're taking away his Italian accent, his high-pitched voice that we've been used to for decades upon decades. Now that they're going in a very completely different direction, I hope it works out, but now it just seems like a big excuse so that Illumination can cast someone like Chris Pratt in the role. Because that's all animated movies are today, is just what big celebrity can you get to voice this character, because that voice will sell tickets as opposed to the actual character itself. It's the sad truth of Hollywood and something we gotta deal with. I'm still open-minded and still hope that this Mario movie goes good, but I guess it is kind of sad to know that whatever voice Chris Pratt is doing, it ain't gonna be high-pitched, it ain't gonna have Italian accent, so really, it's not gonna sound like Mario. How are you guys feeling on the Super Mario movie taking a very different direction with the voice of Mario? Moving on to something that kind of surprised me here into the world of Power Rangers. We've been hearing for the longest time that there is a Power Rangers reboot movie in the works. And this reboot was said to have a very fascinating plot. One I was excited to see on the big screen where it would be set in present day with a new group of Power Rangers that then travel back to the 90s and meet the 90s version of the Power Rangers and they have to join together to fight some threat. I was like, okay, some time travel involved, Power Rangers, two different sets of them. That could be really cool. Can't wait to see it in theaters. It ain't gonna be in theaters. It was reported just yesterday by Deadline that it looks like the whole Power Rangers reboot movie is gonna be much more than just a movie. It's a cinematic universe that will be movies and actual TV shows connected to the film, but all of it will be premiering on Netflix. And like I said, I'm kind of surprised here because I really thought this Power Rangers reboot was gonna go to theaters and end up becoming a huge success, but I guess maybe they were afraid the same thing would happen that the first Power Rangers movie did, where it just didn't end up making the amount of money they wanted to, so they didn't continue making sequels to that film, which I'm still upset about. I actually really did like that first live action Power Ranger movie and would have loved a sequel, but it looks like they'd rather play it safe and just have Netflix give them buckets and loads of money so that they can make a lot of programming for their streaming service and I'm still looking forward to the reboot. Like I said, the whole time travel idea and the two sets of Power Rangers does sound interesting and fun. But now I'm just kind of worried about how it's all going to work out now that they're going to want to connect it to another series, then more movies, then another series, then more movies. I'm skeptical on it, but open-minded. How do you guys feel that the Power Rangers reboot is no longer going to be a movie theater release and instead is part of Netflix's big cinematic universe? Talking about some Spider-Man No Way Home, we got some weird little interesting updates currently going on in that 
universe. So you guys know, one of the biggest sources we've had for Spider-Man No Way Home is scooper Daniel Richman, who seems to be always on the money for when a trailer, a poster, any sort of thing involving Spider-Man usually comes out. So since he's been reliable on that end, some of the new things he's saying can be taken with some credibility. One of the first things he let slip on his Patreon account about Spider-Man No Way Home is that he confirms that Kristen Dunst and Emma Stone, the two love interests from the separate Spider-Man universes, were intended to be part of Spider-Man No Way Home, but because of COVID restrictions, they were not able to be part of the movie, which I do think is really sad because I would have loved to have seen them part of the film. But also he went ahead and added that Kevin Feige still has plans for them outside of the Spider-Man No Way Home movie. And I'm like, what? It feels to me like what a lot of fans have been speculating that if the spider people, Andrew and Toby, are part of No Way Home, it could lead to maybe their own separate universes continuing on with sequels. And I don't care if that would be confusing as hell to fans to have three different versions of Spider-Man currently running, I would be dying of happiness if I got to see The Amazing Spider-Man 3 or Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man 4 while we give Tom Holland's version a break and then eventually he'll continue on with his series. That's the only thing I can think about with involving these two characters back and Kevin Feige having plans for them because as much as I love those characters, they're not really like leading starring roles. They're supporting characters that help out Spider-Man tell his story. So it's kind of interesting that they have more plans. Now the other information that Daniel Richmond let slip on his Patreon account as he was talking about some other characters that are looking to be getting their own solo movies that Sony has in mind. And two of those characters that Sony is right now considering to give their own solo movie are people like Sandman and the Rhino. Look, I love Sony. Thank you for Spider-Man No Way Home and what you're doing, but really, Giving all of these villains their own movies, we already got the Venom franchise, we're about to get Morbius, we know we have Kraven the Hunter in the works, like, you're really gonna give every single Spider-Man villain their own film? I feel like it's really just milking the brand, and I'm like, what's your end game? What's the point of doing this? And then, I kind of stopped to think about the Rhino and Sandman character as a Spider-Man fan, and I'm like... I guess there are some interesting things there you could do. Like, look at Sandman, for instance. He's just a guy who really wants to help out his daughter, who is sick. Wants to do everything he can in his power to make sure she gets better from her illness, even if that includes robbing a couple of people and earning some money on the side to pay for her treatment. And call me crazy, but I think the Rhino also has an interesting story to tell. I feel like Rhino was not done justice at all in Amazing Spider-Man 2 with that little moment he got with Paul Giamatti. But if we stick to the comic version of Rhino, where he's one of these goons that was given the rhino suit and the suit is stuck on him where he can't take it off and he's this permanent monster I feel like there's something you could do there. But now that we know that Sony is considering giving them solo movies, I feel like it only backs up that thought that they are working on a Sinister Six movie and maybe this is their way of kind of like Avengers assembling them up to either fight Spider-Man or who knows whatever threat. Because I still don't understand how a Sinister Six movie works with the villains as the leads. How are you guys feeling about Sony considering giving Sandman and Rhino their own solo movie? But that is all the movie news we currently have going on right now, guys. I want to thank you so much for taking time out out of your day to watch these videos please don't be forgetting to go follow that new twitter account like and subscribe and stay tuned for my review of resident evil welcome to raccoon city later today but as always my name's chris take care